Well, there's some sharks swimming around in the water in D.C. these days, too. And as you all know, in every presidential election, it's the voters in the middle uh, who always swing things in the end. And President Obama needs those voters once again now if they are ever going to pass health care here. Let's take a look at some of these numbers from Gallup, okay? Uh, this one, independents. This is specifically among independents. Nearly half of them would advise Congress members to vote against the bill. 29% say they want them to vote in favor of health of this health care bill. Meanwhile, 64% say that their representatives vote on this, and it doesn't say which way, but they're saying it will have a major factor on how they uh, place their votes in the next election. Uh, you know, however their congressmen or women vote uh, in this on this issue, they're going to be watched very, very closely uh, for the next election. So let's get into it with the panel. Tucker Carlson is a senior fellow with the Cato Institute and a Fox News contributor. Bernard Whitman is a former pollster to President Bill Clinton. Bernard, you say that you're shocked that there is not more moral outrage uh, on this issue. I absolutely am. The fact that in this day, health care is not considered a basic and fundamental human right in this country is an absolute disgrace. The fact that each day we essentially decide who lives and who dies based on what type of coverage people have and what type of income they have is an absolute moral disgrace. And I would ask my conservative friends and colleagues in this situation, what would Jesus do? What is the compassionate and moral imperative? And I think that has really been lost in this debate, the need to care for fellow human beings in the way that all industrialized democracies accept us I think it's a question of what you do. consider to, to be moral uh, in terms of, of, of <laughs> helping people and in terms of health care. Tucker's chuckling. Chuckling Tucker. Go yeah, ahead. I mean, I, I, well, the short answer is we don't know what Jesus would do, and it's a little over the top to suggest that we do know or that either party has a hammer lock on moral values or is doing God's will. I mean, that's exactly the kind of language that the left has long complained about on the right. So I don't, I don't think we even need to go there. Moreover, if health care is a right, where does it come from? Where is that a right guaranteed in the Constitution by the U.N.? I mean, it, those are, that's a silly conversation. The, the real conversation is, What's the best plan? What makes the most sense? What's the most efficient? What's wastes the least amount of money and keeps the largest number of people healthy? And I think you can, the American people's opinion on that has to count for something. Uh, and this poll suggests that they're very worried, very worried yeah. about the president's you know, plan. I, I do think, you know, a lot of people who are in favor of this plan are frustrated and they're asking your question, where's the moral average? But, but then don't you have to ask yourself, well, where is it? Maybe it doesn't exist for a reason. Maybe the people that we're appealing to in this in this you know argument don't feel that the that the that the need is as dire as you seem to think it is, and they don't feel like this uh, way of addressing it is actually going to help those people in the end. I, I think if you talk to any of the 50 million people that don't have health coverage, if you talk to any of the millions of Americans who are million? who are denied health care coverage every year because of pre-existing conditions, if you talk to those individuals, I think they will very much agree that it is. An, an absolute moral imperative. So let me imperative. ask you this, then, then why don't we have a moral imperative to do tort reform? Why don't we have a moral imperative to allow people to cross state lines when they're looking to sh and shopping for a cheaper, better policy, Bernard? I, I think we should actually compare it more to public education. 100 years ago in this country, we agreed that it was absolutely essential for our children to be educated, to feed their bodies and minds. If that's the case, why can't we 100 years later agree that we need to care and feed the body of children in addition to Tucker, their minds? Tucker, I, mean, okay. I imagine that the, that the president is going to try to impress us uh -huh. upon people tomorrow night. Is this the way he should be going? You know, if you, if you were telling the president how to be persuasive tomorrow night, is this what you would be advising him? I would say don't walk, run from that argument because it's an alienating argument. The idea that my side is the morally righteous one that has God's seal of approval on it implies that you're immoral and that you don't have God's seal of approval. If you disagree with me, somehow you violated natural law or God's law. That offends the hell out of people, and it should. By the way, on the, this question, should the president's health care plan pass, seniors, people 55 and older, people who vote, a key demographic on any question, lose this by nine points. By nine points, they oppose this. So if the president goes to them tomorrow night and says, if you're against this, you're immoral, is that going to win them over? No! It's going to ensure a Republican take it all. I think we all have to agree that health care ought to be a fundamental right, and then we have to decide the best way of actually delivering that. And I would be the first to say the administration has not done a great job, and I think that it's going to be absolutely incumbent upon the president to explain that this is about controlling costs, expanding coverage, increasing competition, and ending health care rationing. Yeah, well, you, well, there's a lot of ways to do that, and, that, and that's what uh, that they're going to fight over. Tucker Carlson, as always, thank you very much, Tucker. Uh, Bernard Whitman, thank you. Great, great to see you. Great to Thanks have you so in much. the studio. All right.